So hi everyone, this is Jessica from the Achievement Squad coming at you with a walkthrough for Superliminal. So as part of this walkthrough we're going to show you the location of all of the collectibles and some of the missable achievements. We will not be showing you how to do the speed runs in this video as my hands are too clumsy to figure it out so quickly. And now before I jump into this video it's important that I uh, give a shout out to the TA community for this one. So Dragonite, Kyle D. Scott, Die Quarks and Life Sucks Play Halo. Um, you guys have been incredibly helpful in making this guide. Um, shout out to you guys. They have done some incredible text walkthroughs on the uh, True Achievements website. So make sure you go check them out and give them a thumbs up. Because of them, uh, they've actually helped me do this video. So all credit goes to them for making this possible. Okay, so just a quick bit of information on the game. It's a little bit fiddly in some places. Um, the game is purely built on perspective oriented puzzles. Um, and it's about you making shapes larger and smaller. Um, I strongly recommend that you attempt the collectibles and follow a normal walkthrough and kind of run through the game first of all to familiarize yourself before you attempt to actually do the, uh, the speed runs. You probably won't get them on the first try. Um, but yeah, the game is orientated around perspective. It's about making and changing the different sizes of objects by looking at them from different angles and picking up and moving them around. Um, I will help you all the way through. There will be cuts where I make an absolute fool of myself. So there's a couple of bit of buggy moments that I find with this one. Um, I also apologize in advance if the audio is a little bit offset. Uh, I had some issues with the Elgato capture card. We're now trying out things in 4K. Um, so let us know in the comments down section below if you're seeing better quality improvements or if we can do anything better on that front. Now, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Massive dilemmas, or for allowing the smallest problems to get blown completely out of proportion? At the Pierce Institute, our patent pending Somnusculpt technology provides safe and effective dream therapy while you rest in the comfort of our flagship clinic. Located right next to the secondary overflow parking lot at the University Medical Center. Somnusculpt will make your dreams come true. Okay, so chapter one is called Induction. It's worth noting that you can level select and go back to any of these chapters at any point in time. Um, there's gonna be a lot of collectibles, primary fire alarms, fire extinguishers that you must use up, and constellations are the primary collectibles. So you start off chapter one by looking at this wall. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is turn around from the arrows, uh, sorry, the, the explanation on how to move, and you wanna sign the paperwork behind you. Turn around and a door will have appeared and you want to make your way down to the end of the corridor. And you want to pass straight on through and you want to look to the left and you're going to find a rook. You want to push the B button to pick it up and you'll notice it will change size. Move it to the left so slightly and you want to hop over the boxes. Make your way into the next room and look up to the block in the top right hand corner. Pick it up and place it next to the larger C block and you want to jump on top to get to the next doorway. Continue through the corridor. And when you're in this room, you want to stand on the button that is directly in front of you and it's going to open up the door. And you want to pick up the cube that is on the table whilst you're stood on the button. Take the cube and you want to place it on top of the button and you want to go into the next room. Turn around and pick up the cube again. Now we need to make it bigger, so look up and you want to drop the cube and then catch it to make it slightly bigger and place it in the corner um, by the doorway. Now this takes practice and time to get this right. Uh, resizing of objects is key for you to moving forward, so yeah, I screw it up a fair bit, but practice and you'll get the hang of it. Keep following the corridor to the next room, and uh, you want to look to your left, you're going to see a window. You want to pick up the chest piece that's on the other side of the window. Make your way to the window on the opposite side, and you want to place the chest piece down on the button. Look to your left, and the door will have opened up, and you want to continue through the doorway uh, until you get into the next room. To your left, you're gonna see a block of cheese and you wanna look up and you wanna rotate this using left bumper and the right analog stick. Uh, and you wanna resize the cheese. So look up and you wanna drop the cheese down and as you'll see, it gets bigger. You wanna keep rinsing and repeating. The easiest way to do it is to catch it as it falls and you wanna make the cheese so big that the wedge allows you to climb up to the door in the back of the room. Okay, so once your cheese is in position, you wanna make your way up the cheese and you wanna press Y at the top of the cheese to jump across if required. 
The character does do a little mantle as well sometimes. Follow the corridor around and you're going to find a cube on your left that you want to pick up. And to shrink objects down, walk closer to things like walls and that kind of stuff or distance yourself and that will shrink it down. So shrink the cube down. I'm just going to put it out of the way at this time. I'm going to drop it on the bottom, the button just here. Look to your left and you're going to find a boarded up door. Pull off the planks from this door. And once you've done that, you want to make your way in to find a soda machine. The sodas are the same in every machine, so you want to start up by the top and make your way down the different sodas as you're going. We don't call them sodas here in the UK. Uh, they're called fizzy pops. Anyway, make your way into the other room and you want to make the can as large as possible. So look up, but you want to drop it and just let it hit the floor to get the sugar. Uh, Sugar crash achievement or sugar rush, I don't remember. Now, I apologize about the cut here. The soda can for me decided to fall through the floor. So, start off by picking up the can and we want to make it bigger and we want to place it on the far side of the room to where the wooden planks are. So, drop that down. We then want to grab the cube off the button. We're going to need to borrow it again just for a little bit to so reach into there and you want to grab it out and uh, make it a little bit bigger. Um, now, the can's not big enough at this time, so I need to adjust it. So take out the cube, make the cube a little bit bigger, uh, and you'll see me faff about a little bit with making the can as big as possible. So once your can's at a decent size, you're gonna need the cube. Uh, I had to mess around with mine for a little bit for some reason. So make the cube a little bit bigger, and you wanna hop on top of the can from the cube. So jump on top of the cube and jump up. You then wanna pick up the cube that is down below you, and then you want to make that also slightly bigger again. Uh, and we're going to get our chess piece collectible. So drop that down, hop on top of the cube, and at the top here you're going to see a little blue uh, pawn piece. You want to select that one and it's going to disappear, but that is your first chess piece collectible of the game. Once that's down, you want to drop down, uh, and you want to take your cube with you, place the cube back onto the button, so shrink it down by getting close to the wall, uh, and you want to drop that down on the button just there. Once you've done that, you want to go through the door and you want to continue down the corridor on the other side. Look to your left, you're going to find a very large cube. Pick that one up and you want to shrink this down, but make your way over to the broken window on the other side at the same time. And in the distance, you'll see a yellow button through the broken window uh, and you'll need to place the cube onto the broken button. For some reason, it has a bit of a funny time with me, uh, but shrink it down and place it on the other side. Now once you've done that, you can make your way into the next room, so follow the corridor through it again. And you're going to come into this room here. You're going to pick up the block that's in the corner, but go to the back of the right hand corner of the room. Look up to the top left and drop the cube over the other side of the wall. Go through the door and then place the cube on the button. So the way you see this little kind of cloudiness over the door, um, that prevents you from uh, moving objects out of that room. Make your way down to the end of the corridor, take a left and you want to go through the door. And as you come into here, you want to look at the door above, uh, the sign above the door. Move into the back corner and you want to make that sign bigger by dropping it down and catching it along the way. You see the exit sign is now huge. You want to rotate that and you want to place that onto the two buttons that are directly in front of you. And that will open up two doors on the other side. So go through this door and then through the next. And continue down to the end of the corridor. And now the door ahead of you is closed, but you want to look to the left and peek through the gap and you're going to see a piece of cheese on the other side. The aim is to use the cheese to knock down the wall, so make it bigger by looking up. And you want to head over to the wall. Uh, you might want to rotate it around a little bit. And then you want to drop the cheese and it's going to knock over the panels uh, to reveal a way out. You want to pick up the cheese again make your way over the panel but take a left and then you go through the door straight ahead of you to go to the right and in here just drop the cheese for two seconds as you've already already seen it on your right hand side there's your first fire extinguisher press b until it's completely run out and then on your left you're going to see a fire alarm which you want to hit by pressing b now get ready for one of the most awkward collectibles in the game you're going to make your way down to the end here and in the shadows ahead of you there is a hole so don't go too far forward but you need to get to the other side of this hole. So you need to resize your cheese, place it by the edge of the hole, and use it as a thing to get you height to jump on over. Now if you drop the cheese, uh, like I do in this moment here, so as you come up to the shadow, 
you'll see the holes I was referring to. When you put the cheese down, it will roll over to the other side. If this happens, backtrack to where you found the cheese in the first place and it would have respawned. But these are exactly the reasons why uh, you do not do the collectibles in your speedrun because these things are an absolute pain. And eventually, once you've got it right, the big cheese will make a perfect jumping ledge for jumping over to the other side. I got lucky in my first playthrough, it glitched me up and threw me up onto the pipe above, uh, but you can't reach it with the cheese normally. Once you cross to the other side, go behind and on the chipboard you're going to find a blueprint. This is your first blueprint of the game, uh, and they are one of the main collectibles. Also apologies about the audio drop at this point in time. Now, we're in chapter two, and we're gonna to start to feel a significant ramp up in things like fire alarms and the fire extinguishers. There's approximately 80 fire extinguishers, and I think about 60 odd uh, fire alarms in total. Exit out of the room, and you wanna follow it to the left, you're gonna find a fire extinguisher on your left-hand side, and directly next to that is a fire alarm. Hit the switch. Once you've done that, make your way into the back room, and in the back room, you're gonna find another vending machine. This time, you wanna pick the next soda down, so click on the button and it's going to spit out a green can for you. Pick that up and we want to turn around and go back into the previous room and next to the cabinets there is a bin on the floor for recycling. Drop your can into this one and then pick up the can again and drop it into the bin that's next to it and this will bag you two achievements for recycling and not recycling. You can try to get another can from the machine if you'd like but sometimes it shorts out. Um, it all is a matter of luck. Um, yeah, but once you've done that um, you'll be able to move on with the level and that's going to get you the two achievements. Okay, as you keep going around, you want to head into this pink corridor and as you're going through the pink corridor, you want to take a right just here and you're going to find another fire alarm and another fire extinguisher. Okay, from those collectibles, we want to turn around and we want to start making our way into the corridor and take the first right, and on your right hand side you are going to see a, another fire alarm and another fire extinguisher. Make sure you push the B button to run it out. And then we wanna go through this door here. So this fire exit, push B on it to pick it up, just drop it to the left. And then on the other side of this door you're going to find a fire alarm. From here we will then go forward, and we wanna take a right, and we're gonna make our way down to the end, and on the left hand side here you'll find another fire extinguisher that you need to use up. And on the right hand side, another fire alarm for you to pull. Now in the room next to you, there is nothing. Uh, I decided to go in here and explore for some reason. And then you want to go into the room on the left, keep walking forward through this horrible weird corridor. And then on the right hand side, you're gonna find another fire alarm. Okay, so make your way into the next room and there are some more things for us to grab in here. So just turn around and by the door, there is another fire alarm for you to grab and a, another fire extinguisher. Once you've got those, we're gonna need to turn around and there is a little fire escape sign that you wanna pick up just over here. You wanna make your way around to the side just here and we wanna make this sign as big as possible and we wanna create a ramp to get over the wall in the back. So make it big and you wanna place it down on the wall I had a bit of a nightmare for this one, so I'm going to cut it short. Damn these hands. You want to hop up onto the uh, newly formed ramp and jump over the wall to get out of the area. Make your way into this area, and then on the right-hand side next to this lift, you're going to find a, another fire extinguisher for you, for you to use. And then we're going to grab the next blueprint. So from here, keep making your way around the right, and then on the wall, on the right-hand side, you will find your next blueprint. Once you've got that, return to where the fire extinguisher was and in the back of the room you're going to see a door next to some boxes. You want to hop up onto those and go through the door. Ahead of you is a, another fire alarm that you can grab. After you've hit that fire alarm, enter the next room and you want to turn around and you're going to find another fire extinguisher that is on the wall just by that door. It seems to be the common hiding place for all of them as well, as a heads up. Make your way into the room on the right and you're going to see to your left another fire alarm that you need to hit. 
and then to the left again you will see a fire extinguisher and if you've been following along you'll get the fire alarm expert achievement now we're going to do something a little bit confusing this game is full of those kind of opportunities line up the squared paint on the wall and you're going to form a cube and you want to pick that one up make your way outside into the corridor again make your cube bigger and use it to get to the uh, door ahead of you and once you're up you've got a fire alarm on your left hand side you want to enter the door on the right and as you come into here there is a fire extinguisher by this door and you make your way to the back right hand corner of the room and you're going to find a, another fire alarm. Now we need to do a bit more of this kind of weird alignment stuff. So you want to look at this table and align it with the vase on the top so it forms the actual table. Make your way to the other side and form a, another cube. Now this is not a complete cube, it's actually got a set of ledges inside. So make your way out and you want to spin this cube around so that it's facing towards you as well. So you'll see the ledges that I just mentioned, and then you want to make it bigger so you can get to the door at the top. Okay, so once you've got your cube in position, hop on up and hop up into the door. You want to turn around and you want to grab it again, so you want to take it into the next room with you because you'll use it for the next part of the puzzle. Uh, and you want to go into that next room. Now as you come into that next room, you want to turn around. I got a little bit excited and did it too early, uh, but you will find on the wall a fire extinguisher. And then to your left, you're going to find a, another fire alarm. Hit that one. And once you've done that, we need to use the cube that we've just picked up to get up on the left-hand side of this area. So spin it around, make it bigger, place it by the left-hand wall and hop up to the top of the ledge. Okay, so when you're at the top on the left hand side, you want to line up the door painting and the pillar with the sellotape on it to form the exit. Take the door with you and you want to go through the door just ahead. Now just drop the door down here for a moment and you want to go behind all of this junk and you're going to go into what we call a constellation room. Uh, underneath the stairs you'll see a bit of a hidden doorway uh, and a hidden corridor. Follow this to the end for your first constellation collectible. Now the aim behind these is that you've got to look up to the ceiling uh, and you've got to find the constellation amongst all of these stars. It is incredibly painful. But walk around and you'll actually see them form into a shape. In this case, you are looking for a dining table. Now it's worth noting to make sure that you secure this collectible, you must press B on it and it must have all of the stars fall off. So press B and once all the stars are done and it's done its little kind of light shiny thing, that counts as the collectible being done. If you walk away from it too early, it cancels the collectible. So now you're good to go, that the stars have fallen off, uh, and you want to find your way out of the room, and we want to go back to where we were with our door just a second ago. Okay, make your way around the other side of the corkboard thing, and you want to pick up the door from earlier. We want to start making our way up to the top of the stairs. Now we're going to create a ramp with this door to the top of the cork board. So look up, drop your door down and keep making it as big as possible. And eventually you can place it between the walkway and the, the wood. I get lucky here and just drop it into the right position first time around, which is incredibly abnormal for me. Make your way to the top and you're going to find a chess piece collectible at the top that you're going to need to grab. Once you've done that, jump back down. And you want to head into the next room. Hello. So you can see a lot of green paint on the floor, but we want to start off by looking up to the roof and to the pipe, and you're going to find another cube hidden against that. Make this cube a little bit bigger, and replace it by the wall just ahead, so drop it down. Jump on top of your cube, and then you're going to hop up one. Now, we want to get to that door later, but not just yet. Bring your cube up with you, and just place it down on the side for the time being. We then want to make our way across this yellow walkway and we want to align the picture of the chess piece. This is going to help us get one of the collectibles in a second and a miscellaneous achievement. So take that across and go down to your cube. We want to try and get into the door at the top just here. So make your cube fairly big. And you want to pick up your chess piece and you want to hop on top of your cube. 
and then you want to use your chest piece as a mechanism to jump up to the door. Now actually to the right of this door there is a very well hidden fire alarm that you want to hit. Um, my chest piece isn't a little big enough here, uh, but I managed to get the fire alarm. So make the chest, chest piece ever so slightly bigger. Hop on up, hop into the door. On your left you're going to find a fire extinguisher. You'll waste that one. And you want to keep following the corridor around to the end and you're going to get the, uh, the nook achievement. Um, saying please use the, other, use the other door. There's also a dice in here which you can use to help get to the next collectible. Uh, however, I find this dice to be a little bit weird and buggy and it has a mind of its own. So above us just here, you'll see a vent uh, that is running along the ceiling and hanging down. We need to use the two cubes uh, and the chest piece if possible to get onto the vent at the top. Now you can see a bit of a dodgy cut here because I screwed up so many times. And I've also given up on using the red cube and had a bit of a rage quit. So make sure that you've got this cube pretty big uh, and it's stacked up and then you use the chest piece to get to the vent above you. So keep playing around with it until you get everything into the right size. As you can see, I have a bit of a struggle, uh, but once you've got it right, it's fairly straightforward from there. So big cube and using the chest piece to get to the top or the red dice as you see fit. And then once you're up there, you're going to need to navigate across the air vent. Now I will warn you that the strings are solid items and they will push you off the air vent if you're not careful, meaning you have to climb back up and start again. Uh, so just watch out for those strings, follow it around to the left and you're going to find another chess piece. Now that you have the chess piece, drop down and you want to go out the door and you want to make your way to the far end of this kind of gravelly area. There's nothing in here for you to get. And you want to make your way across the walkway. Now these radios are dotted all the way throughout. If you listen to them, you get a bit of information from a guy called Glenn Pierce about what's going on in this world. Uh, keep making your way forward and you want to enter to this red room. And by the door you just entered, you'll find your next fire extinguisher that you need to run out. And then you want to turn around, and we're going to start making our way forward, and there's the next fire alarm by the door. Hit this one. You want to enter this room. Uh, there's some more fire alarms, and there's another fire extinguisher in here. Make your way down to the end of the corridor. You're going to find that fire extinguisher and run it down into the ground. Safety first. Once you've done that, you want to turn around, and you want to make your way over to the fire alarm on the wall. And you want to hit that. You're going to look to the left and you're going to find another fire alarm exactly on the opposite side of this room. Hit this one also. Now we're going to defy all logic uh, and we are going to look up out of the skylight and you want to grab the moon. Bring the moon into the room and you want to drop it down and you want to walk forward and there's going to be some things that you're going to need on here. So on here you will find a, another can of um, soft drink. So you want to reach in and you want to grab that one off. Not pick the moon up again. Uh, the moon actually floats as well. You want to take that can and you want to make your way down to the trash can on the end. And we're going to feed this, um, this trash can the uh, soda can. And when you drop that in, you're going to get another achievement. As we will no longer have any way of controlling it. For example, if you see your parents, please punch them in the face as hard as you can and now we're going to go after our next blueprint and on top of the moon there is a cheese wedge. You want to pick this one up and you want to use this cheese wedge, cheese wedge to build a path to get to the uh, skylight. Now I recommend that you use the objects in the room to lift the cheese off the floor a little bit uh, to give you that bit more of a boost. It's a bit of a pain to get out but once you've got it right you'll be able to get to the skylight. Apologies for the dodgy cut here. I actually suck at this. so. Yeah, just to cut it short to save the embarrassment. So now what you'll see is that with this attempt, my cheese is actually stacked on the furniture at the back. Uh, it uses a light in the corner. Uh, you can hop on top of the cheese and you want to make your way up to the skylights that we've got above us. Either one doesn't matter. Uh, and then you want to jump up. And my character kind of does a little clamber up, which is quite helpful, eventually. Uh, but we're going to go get the next blueprint. So once you're up, take a left and you want to follow the floor around.
and down by the traffic cones and step ladder you will find your next blueprint for you to grab. Once you've got that, make your way over to the skylight and you want to drop back down. Now what I do here is I actually take the moon with me, uh, but this achievement appears to be a bit weird. Uh, there's an achievement for vaguely doing something. Uh, we believe it's for holding on to something for about five minutes, but anyway, ignore that. You'll see a door on top of the moon. You want to pick that up. You want to make this bigger as this is your exit from the level. So grow that in size a little bit. Uh, and ignore the fact that I pick up the moon. You don't need to do this. My achievement was weird in my first playthrough. I got it from handling the moon, but I didn't in the second playthrough. Uh, you want to hit the switch by the door that you enter. And you want to make your way down to the end. You're going to see a fire extinguisher next to a lift. Uh, at this point, just go into the lift. You are done with this chapter. Okay, so we are now in chapter number three. Um, kick it off by switching off the alarm clock if you want to. You're going to exit out this room and you want to take a left and you want to follow the corridor around and you're going to bump into your old friend the fire extinguisher and the fire alarm. These always seem to appear in this location every single time without fail. So get both of those and we're going to start making our way forward uh, and we're going to go to the vending machine. Select as many drinks as possible for the ones that you haven't had yet. In my case I've picked the uh, the the third one down and the fourth one down uh, and then I'm not able to take anything more than that. I think this number is random of how many sodas you can take from the machine but it's all okay. Follow the corridor around and now we are going to get our next collectible. So turn around and look at the door and you want to shuffle to the left and you're going to find a hidden corridor. You want to go in here and you're going to walk into another constellation room. So you want to look up to the roof again like last time. This is our second constellation and you want to line everything until you get a coffee mug, I believe that it is. Yeah. So keep walking around, look generally towards the door uh, and you'll eventually find a coffee mug that you'll need to get. And like I previously mentioned, make sure that you make, uh, you press B, the little shiny kind of animation is done and all of the stars fall off of the uh, the image once it's over. Yep. So once it's there, click the B button, it will shine around the outline, forming it completely. Uh, and then all of the stars will fall from the sky. Once you've done that, exit this room. And then we want to continue forward into the next, into the red room. Now as you come into here, you want to give it a quick turn around and you're going to find another fire alarm that is behind you. Once you've done that, you want to look to the right and you want to head into this room you want to pick up the cube here. Make the cube big so you can get up the ledge that is just in front of you. So hop on top of your cube, hop up one more time. And once you've done that, you want to head down the corridor and you're going to find a fire extinguisher that you need to use up. Now head into this room, by that door you've just entered, there's another fire, uh, fire alarm. And now we're going to need to use these two cube halves to get into the air vent that is above us. In the air vent you are going to find your next chess piece collectible. So make the cube parts big and then stack them on top of each other until you get up high enough to view what is inside. Uh, as always I screw this up so I cut it short so you guys don't have to endure the uh, stupidity that, on my end. Um, yep. To make the cube big, stack these other piece on top and then you're going to jump up and look into the vent and you're going to find the collectible you're looking for. So it's a little red chess piece. Very difficult to see. The collectibles in this game are so insanely hidden, it's unreal.
Now you have this, pick up the uh, half a block, make your way down to the end and you want to make a stepping stone to get into the next room at the top just here. So make your blocks bigger and then hop on up. Okay, so once you're up in this room, you want to keep making your way forward. Do not pick up the dice on the floor just yet. Follow the corridor around and you're going to come across another fire extinguisher. And then just to the left of that, you're going to find another fire alarm for you to hit. Hit that, turn around and you want to take a few steps back. Keep following the corridor around and then on the floor, pick up the dice and it's going to remove a piece of the floor. Drop through and you want to grab the grate off the wall at the back and we're going to use this to get the next collectible. Now just ahead of you, above the vending machine and the gas canisters, uh, you'll see a vent that is hanging off the roof. So make your grate nice and large, uh, and we're going to use that to stack up against the wall here so we can get up on top of this vent just in front of us. Uh, as always, naturally I have a bit of a hard time. I think this one's not too bad. I have no idea how I'm going to cope with the speed runs when it comes to it. Um, yeah, make it bigger, and then we're going to place it down, eventually. Okay, so once that grate is large enough, you want to hop on up. Um, these collectibles are incredibly fiddly from time to time. When you're at the top, grab the chest piece. It doesn't get any easier for the record as well. It only gets harder. Uh, you want to drop down and you want to grab any of the sodas that you haven't had from the vending machine. You should now be on baking soda and random mini soda, um, but there are enough vending machines for you to get this achievement quite easily. Make your way into the next room and you want to turn around for your next fire extinguisher. You want to exhaust this one. Once you've done that, turn back to look at the blocks that are behind you. They're a little bit skew if. You want to make those a little bit bigger and you want to use them to climb up the ledge ahead of you. Okay, so you want to make your way forward into this room with the weird painting. It's incredibly confusing. There's a fire alarm on the wall by this weird painting. And then once you've got that, turn around and make your way up to the top of the stairs. And take a right to find your next fire extinguisher. And you can probably already see it, but there is a, another fire alarm on the wall just here. Once you've done that, walk into this room. And you want to pull down the block in front of you. I look right down at the floor for some reason. And you want to pull the block on the wall as far right as possible. Hop up, and then hop up to the ledge in front of you use your fire extinguisher and now we're going to grab ourselves a rubber duck so walk past this stack of pallets and you'll find a rubber duck in the bucket just here pick that up make your way back into the last room and we're going to go get our next blueprint so drop your duck as you're not going to use it for a second just yet move this pillar backwards and then we use the pillar on the floor that we moved in earlier to make this bigger and then you want to grab the vent and you want to pull the vent out. As you can tell, I do this in a very impractical way. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you can get on top of the pillar, just the high pillar. So I use the duck for this. And now, luckily enough, my duck falls over, so I don't have to use the other ledge I just pulled out. Uh, and once the duck has fallen over, you want to jump on its head. And you want to jump onto its main body. Uh, and you want to pull this down a little bit. And you want to hop onto this pillar. And in front of you, you'll see a blueprint. Hop on top of here and you want to select that one. Now once you've done this, we're going to go get an achievement. So drop down and you want to pick up the duck and you're just going to stand there and do nothing. Now this takes a few minutes, but I'm going to cut it short, but you'll bag yourself an achievement for holding onto an item for five minutes or doing something vaguely something. It really gives you no clue whatsoever. This is because of Life Sucks Plays Halo that I know this, so shout out to that guy for making it happen. Um, use your duck to get out of here, so hop on up, and we want to make our way across to the next room. Now as you come in here, a bit of a frame rate issue, uh, but you want to turn around and there is a fire extinguisher behind you. You want to look back at the blocks that we were looking at a second ago, and you want to take a piece off the side, 
We're going to make this bigger and we're going to use it to proc up and get to the door that is in front of you. So keep playing about with the bits of wood and eventually you'll be able to climb up with no issue. Unlike me. As you come up on the left hand side there's a fire alarm, you want to hit that. You want to go through the next door. As you come in there is a fire extinguisher right by this door that you've just entered. And you want to make your way back here and you're going to pick up this cube. Head over to the ledge in the distance. Look up, drop the cube and you want to catch maybe one of the smaller cubes because it will fall to pieces. And you want to make one of those a little bit bigger. Uh, and you're going to use that to hop on up to the top of the ledge. I struggle for some reason, I've made it a little bit of the wrong size and I fail again in that process. Um, turn around, grab one of the cubes, it doesn't matter which one, and bring it up with you. You want to look to the right hand side of this area, you're going to find a fire extinguisher that you need to, to use up. And you want to take the face off of this dice just here. Pick up the smaller cube and you want to go head across to this um, reinvented dice, drop down and then you want to look straight ahead of you and you want to place this block down on the floor to create a ledge to get up to the higher point. And as you come up here you want to take a left and you want to head down you're going to find a blueprint and a fire extinguisher. Once you've got both of those backtrack. And as you come up to the exit, there's another fire, fire alarm on the side. Head through the door, look next to the door, you'll find another fire alarm. This is a very familiar corridor, by the way. It's the one we used earlier. Uh, make your way down to the end by the lift and there's another fire extinguisher. There is always one alarm and one fire extinguisher in this corner every time you visit this corridor and you come here multiple times. We are now entering chapter number four, and I apologize, this is where the audio has completely died on me. Um, yeah, it was so badly out of sync, I just removed it completely. I follow the corridor around, uh, and there's a fire extinguisher and a fire alarm on the left-hand side. Thank goodness in this there is actually no audio-orientated puzzles, as this would have not worked. Uh, there's also a radio ahead of you if you want to listen to it. Make your way into the next room for a, another soda machine. Make sure that you uh, get the sodas that you haven't had yet. Uh, and if you've been following along, you should have been able to get everything and you'll get the soda connoisseur achievement. If you don't have it at this stage, don't worry, there will be more opportunities to get it later. Now head back into this room where the office is and go to the cabinets on the right and you're going to see a hidden corridor that takes you into the constellation room. Okay, so in this room you want to keep looking around uh, towards the door and above the door. You're going to find a wheel of cheese or a, a baby bell uh, or an edam piece of e uh, yeah again once make sure you've got all the uh, stars have surrounded it and it's all the stars have fallen off that counts as you've collected it um, you want to make your way outside of this room but that is the first collectible of this chapter done Okay, so it's worth talking about this level a little bit. It plays on the light factor a little bit too much here. Um, it's very hard to see what is going on. So follow the room around to the normal corridors. And you're going to come into this area. There are eight fire extinguishers in this area that you need to clean up. The first two that you can use quite easily. However, the next six are a little bit more trickier to get because as you go forward, the lights go out. Try and grab as many of these as you can before that's over. Now if that happens you can wander around in the dark but it's a little bit tricky. You also have the option of uh, restarting the checkpoint and then going back and doing the ones that are a little bit further down again. However, if you look down to the floor you can just about make out the, uh, the yellow lines that were in front of the doors. Uh, but you can also restart it to, to push through and grab the other ones that you can't see. So it's a little bit dark, it's, very, it's pitch black, it's very dark. Um, but keep working at it and you'll be able to find them all. But in this case, I actually do choose to restart because I have no idea what I'm looking at.
Uh, so in my case, I think I got the majority of them. However, resetting the checkpoint doesn't cause you any issues. Uh, you'll be able to go back and check the fire extinguishers. Uh, on my actual run in the dark, I was able to get them all the first time. But yeah, eight in total in this room. So just check to make sure that you've got all of them. And once you've done that, make your way to the end of the corridor. Okay, so we want to make our way forward and we're going to come to this room that's got kind of like a, a long stint through it. Just keep walking through all of these doors uh, until you get to what is like a freezer. And when you get to the other side, you want to remove the canisters off of the thing just to help you get through. Uh, for some reason, I have a funny few minutes just here. Um, yeah, so once the canister is removed, you want to hop over and we want to make our way through the uh, the doorway. Now here you want to walk to the right and not go to the door at the end. Turn around, you're going to see some plants. Once you've done that, look back again, turn around 180 and you're going to see a brand new formed room there. You can't go through the door in the middle, it is a dead end. Make your way through, go past the diet soda and go through the doorway. I'm going to take a right. And you want to keep on the left, you're going to find a fire extinguisher. You're going to walk forward slowly here because there's actually a hole in the ground. Edge to the left, you're going to find some planks. Walk forward onto those planks, look to the left, take a right, and you want to follow it down to the end. As you reach the end, you want to make your way through the other door, following the blood trail that is on the floor. As you come through here, there'll be a radio on the floor. Grab it if you need it. You want to make your way up the stairs. As you hit the top, you want to take a right. You want to go to left and you go past the door with the head in it. As you come around, you take another left and you want to take another right. And you want to go back into this kind of freezer area. Now in here, at this point, as you go through this door, what you want to do is you want to turn around. You want to use the light in this room. Walk backwards. And as you walk backwards, you'll see a pawn piece appear in front of you. And then eventually, if you step to the right, you'll find some stairs. Use the stairs to go up. Follow the lit walkway around to the next door. As you come in, you're going to find a fire extinguisher on the corner just here. You want to run that one down. And then you want to make your way forward. So continue forward into this room and you're going to make your way down to the end where the red light is. This is coming off of one of the exit signs. Grab this one here and we want to make this a little bit bigger because it's in a, we're going to use it as a light to get through a dark room. So make your way out. Make it bigger, or just drop it on the floor like I do. It depends how you're feeling. Make it bigger. You head down to the end, and by this kind of corner here, you're going to see this dark corridor. Use the light to open it up and be able to see what's going on. Hop onto the boxes, and you want to make a right through these boxes. Drop down on the other side, and there's going to be a gap in the second set of boxes that you can go through. Now, don't leave the room just yet. You want to proc the sign up as a ledge to climb up on top of the first set of boxes. And actually, as a pig's, I'm making a pig's ear of everything. Uh, hop on top of the boxes, uh, use the sign, just keep repositioning as you need to. But once you're on top, you want to get onto the, the top of the boxes. As you can see, I have an absolute mare as always. Uh, yeah, but keep hopping and hopefully you get there. When you're up on top of that second 
uh, next level of boxes. Turn around, you're going to grab your sign. You're going to look to your left. You're going to see another opening. You're going to place your sign across the opposite way. You're going to hop over to the other side and use your sign as a jump up, and you're going to find a chess piece hidden away in the dark. Once you've done that, you want to turn around, grab your sign again just to keep the room lit up, walk forward, and you want to go out of this room just here. You can't take your sign with you, unfortunately. Now, there's a vending machine here if you need to use that one again to make sure you've got all your sodas. If not, just keep going forward and there is a sign at the end. You want to grab that sign, look up, make everything bigger on the sign and it's going to light up the room that is across from you. Uh, you can actually do this in the dark if you're feeling bold, but in this case I'm just showing you the answer to the problem. And you want to hop up the boxes and you're going to find a corridor that is at the top just here. And you want to go through that corridor and come out the other side. Take an immediate right and you want to keep walking forward. Follow the blood trail on the floor and eventually you are going to come across a fire extinguisher that you're going to need to exhaust. And you want to keep making your way forward until you reach a generator. Now once you've booted up your idea generator, which is in the corridor, I like what they did there on two cases, the pun and the uh, play on the company. You can use the supports of these, uh, the chipboard by these machines and you want to jump down to the left set of ledges or the shelving, make your way across and keep going down to the end and you're going to find a uh, blueprint on the floor. Once you've used that, you can use the trolley to hop over to the other side. And you're going to make your way back to the idea machine. When you're back at the idea generator, you want to look through the left window and you want to grab a can of beans off the side. This is my staple. Make your way up the right rung of the chipboard and jump down to the right shelves. You want to follow these along and you're going to come across this kind of area. Uh, you want to make your way to the back and the right hand window is actually an exit. So use the beans to jump on top of the shelf, pick up the beans and then bring them onto the top shelf with you. Uh, you want to increase the size of the beans, the more beans the better. Uh, and you'll be able to get out of the window. So once you've got the right size, as you can tell, again, as always, I fail. Um, still no idea I'm going to do the speed runs. Um, but yeah, once you've got it right, hop on board and you're going to go out the window to find a chess piece. Once you have that chess piece, hop back into the room, taking your beans with you. Uh, and use the beans to climb back over to the other side of the shelf. So drop it down. Again, fail, 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 fail. Place it down, hop over the shelves, follow the blood trail, uh, and make your way past the idea generator. And then down to the end of this corridor. And as you come down here, you wanna take a right. And as you take a right, you're gonna walk back into this very familiar looking corridor which is the end of the game. On your left is a fire extinguisher as always. Make your way down to the lift and there is a fire extinguisher there. Apologies, fire alarm and then a fire extinguisher. Head into the lift and you're done with this level. Okay, so we are now in chapter five. This chapter is about cloning items and making things duplicate lots. Exit your bedroom and follow the corridor around. You're going to find a fire extinguisher and a fire alarm on your left as always. And make your way into the back room. You'll find a, another soda machine or a fizzy pop machine. If you've not used it, now's your chance to, to make sure you've got as much soda as possible. Make your way around the corridor. And as you're coming up this corridor, you're going to find a fire extinguisher to the left of the green door. You're going to want to pick up your door and you want to move it out of the way. Uh, now, here you're going to be able to clone the fire alarm hundred times or several hundred times one clone counts as one pool but you want to keep cloning it until you bag yourself the achievement for doing this now it didn't pop on my screen but it eventually pop later backtrack a little bit because I've missed a fire extinguisher and then go back around the corner for a, another fire alarm just used to use it once and that counts as it uh, being pulled pick up the door off the floor make your way around and you want to drop the green door on the button in the next room Turn around and you want to use the fire extinguisher. I've already used this one up because I got too excited and went too far ahead. Turn around and you want to use the fire alarm again on the wall. And then you want to enter to the next corridor. 
push on ahead so keep making your way down through the purple corridor and as you're coming down this purple corridor you want to take a left and you're going to find another fire extinguisher and another fire alarm for you to use once you've done that turn around because that door's a dud you're going to find another fire extinguisher behind you and you can already see it next to the water cooler in the door is your next fire alarm once you've done that you want to make your way down to the end of the corridor now you want to clone this door as many times to build a kind of very small staircase once you've done that hop on the doors and go over the top and you want to keep walking forward and go through the next door And once you're in this room, you just want to make your way to the other side. I do a quick scout just to make sure I've not missed anything, because uh, there's tons of fire alarms and fire extinguishers. And you're going to come into the room that is going to cause you some grief now. So we need to stack the alarm clocks on top of each other to make a tower. And you do this by making the fire alarm bigger. So you want to keep making it bigger. Uh, in that case, you want to look up, you want to drop it down. Uh, you want to rotate it around but keep making the fire the not the fire alarm the alarm clock bigger until you can actually stack it on top of itself so once it hits a reasonable size it becomes a little bit more usable um, now this tower of stuff that you build probably will fall over multiple times to get used to it it is a bit painful but keep stacking these clocks on top of each other so dupe them stack them on top and the idea is to get to the air vent above you so keep duping and as you climb up, you're going to see a chess piece that is in blue at the top um, that you're going to need to get to. As you see here, my clock starts freaking out a little bit. Uh, but use little ones to be like stepping stones just to climb up. And as you're making your way up, just keep climbing uh, and duping and that kind of stuff. Just be careful. It gets a little bit fragile and it does fall over. This can be a little bit frustrating, this part. Now, once you're up high enough, just look to the top. You'll see a chess piece again. Keep doing what you need to do to get higher and eventually you'll be able to jump up and grab that collectible. Okay, so once you have that collectible, um, as a tip, by the way, you can reset the clocks by pressing the left trigger and they'll all go away. Uh, you want to make your way into the next room, and as you come into this room, turn around, you're going to find the next set of collectibles on the wall. So a fire extinguisher, run that one down, and then there's a fire alarm next to that, so flick that one a few times. Turn around, you want to pick up an alarm clock. Uh, and you want to build a stack of alarm clocks to get to the next fire extinguisher and the next fire alarm on the wall ahead. I make a bit of a mess out of this, but however, yeah, keep stacking them up like we did before uh, and you'll be able to get to them eventually. Okay, so once you're up in that top corridor, you want to follow the corridor around. Take a right and you want to make your way down to the end and you're going to find your next fire alarm. So give it a hit. You're going to make your way down to the end of the corridor. And you're going to come into a room with a big green apple. You're going to pick that apple up and you want to hold it above your head. 
or you want to turn around and look at the fire extinguisher first. It depends on how you're feeling. Uh, so pick up the apple and you want to lift it up in the air and you actually want to drop this down on top of your head uh, just to, so you understand gravity. This will get you the achievement. I got lucky, it rolled the uh, apple off of the button but you need to keep duping the apple until you knock it off the button altogether. Um, so yeah, once the apple's off of that button, there's a fire, uh, fire alarm at the back of this room. You want to hit that one and you want to make your way forward. Okay, now that you're in here, you've got the red apple in front of you. Um, this is going to be key to solving the next part of the puzzle. But however, you want to just quickly make your way around the room. So on the left hand side of the door you've just come through, there is a fire extinguisher. Once you've done that, make your way past this very large fan and at the back by the fire exit style doors, you are going to find your next fire alarm. And then on the opposite side of the room in exactly the same place, you will find another fire alarm to hit. Now you've done this, you want to turn around and you want to make your way into the room and then on your right hand side there is a ramp where you're going to need to take your way up to the top. So climb up to the top of the ramp and you want to look back down the slope for the apple. So as you come up here there is a button. Make sure the fan is out of sight and then you want to clone the apple until it lands on the button. Uh, if you try to clone the apple and the fan is in sight it blows the apples away. Now make your way to the door that you've just opened. Hit the fire alarm on the corner. Once you've done that, you want to progress through this corridor. So keep making your way around. Uh, and eventually you'll come to some stairs, which you'll need to go up. And then on the right hand side of that, there is a fire extinguisher. Now don't go through the door just yet. Look to your left and there is something you can jump on in the dark. I don't know what it is. Jump on top of the door, jump on top of the light, and then jump on the top of the megaphone. Turn around and jump to the pipe and you're going to get your next chess piece collectible. When you're done here, you want to make your way into the next corridor. Uh, there's nothing here, so you want to keep walking forward. You want to take a right and you're going to see this sign in front of you. So it's a som Somnusculpt sign. Uh, just ahead of you there is a fire extinguisher on your left, which you'll need to trigger. And once you've done that, you want to grab the sign at the top and you want to make it to form a stair well up to the top, kind of like you did last time with the door. Once you've done that, you might need to create two layers of signs. Hop on up. Once you're at the top, push the left trigger to remove everything. By that door on the second floor is another fire alarm. Hit this one. Once you've done that, go through the door. And once you're on the other side of this door, turn to the left. And you can see a fire extinguisher by the one you just came in. And now we are going to make our way into this corridor just here. And we're going to go grab our next constellation. Uh, sorry, we've got a fire extinguisher first on the right hand side. I'm going to keep going around until we find our next constellation. Uh, so at this vending machine, you can get more drinks if you need to. Go behind it and you're actually going to find a corridor into a constellation room. Hello, my introductions are redundant. I am a real doctor who went to doctor school. VR has never been a mistake. Now once you're in here, you want to look up and you want to position yourself until you get a vending machine appear. Uh, and you want to click B on that one. Again, wait for the outline to run and wait for everything to drop off. Uh, and you'll bag yourself this collectible. Once you're done with that, you want to exit out of this room. And you want to continue into the corridor, um, so past this vase just here. And as you come into this one, you want to keep making your way down and then you want to take a right. Keep following the corridor along and by the curator's door you're going to find another fire alarm that you need to hit. Once you've done that, keep going further down and you're going to find another fire extinguisher on your right. And as you can probably see it already, there is a, another fire alarm to the right of the private door. There's also a radio here if you want to use it. Hello. Make your way into this room, which is the exit to the level. By the door, as always, a fire extinguisher, uh, sorry, fire alarm. Make your way down to the end of the corridor for a fire extinguisher and the exit of the level. Professional invention. Age science with cutting, a tomorrow can bright. And buts, no ifs, or look good. 
Okay, so we are now in chapter number six. So this is the chapter Dollhouse, uh, and this is focused on size mostly. So once you're done here, you want to exit out, and you're going to go into the relaxation corridor, which is open up just behind you. You want to follow the corridor around, and at the end, you want to take a left. Don't go into the cinema room just yet, because behind that door, there is a fire extinguisher. Enter the cinema room. Now make your way over to the actual screen, but don't go through the exit door. Go to the right of it, and you'll find a hidden corridor in the dark, which is another constellation room. Uh, and in here, as again, as always, look up to the sky and you want to form the next thing. Uh, this one is a chair, uh, so if you walk back, as you can see, it's quite easy to form this one. Uh, you want to press the B button, make sure the stars have dropped off, and you've got your constellation collectible. Once you've done that, exit back out. Okay, so when we are done here, we want to exit out, we will make our way to the right, and we want to follow the corridor around, and as you're coming around, take a left, as you come out of here, you want to take a right, uh, I do a full circle for some reason, but take a right, and you want to keep following the corridor down, you're going to find your next fire extinguisher and fire alarm right next to each other. Make your way into the back room, there's a soda machine if you need it, but if not, take a left, follow the corridor around, and you want to drop down this hole just here. Now this level is called Dollhouse for a reason, because directly in front of you there is a doll's house. Uh, and this is about your size, not the level's size so much. So increase the size of the doll's house to make it bigger. Uh, and the size of the doll house interior always remains the same. You just need to make things bigger and smaller so that you navigate it a little bit better. Enter the house and then there is a fire extinguisher by the door that you've just entered. At the end you'll find a ledge to jump up. On your left, you are going to find a fire alarm. You want to hit that. Once you've done that, you want to continue down the corridor. And as you come up on the left and on the right hand side, there is another fire extinguisher and another fire alarm for you to use. Once you've done that, you want to go out of the door on the right that is now newly opened as you've navigated through the doll's house. And you want to increase the size of the doll's house. So don't decrease it like I do, make it bigger. Uh, you might need to do this a couple of times because you need to be small when you go inside. Head inside and as you come in, you want to hop up the suitcases that are on your left hand side and you want to go through the door that is just here. Continue down to the end of the corridor and you'll see a radio just in front of you. Uh, you've got no need for this one. There's a fire extinguisher by the door that you've just entered, so use that one up. And then you want to go behind to the right, you're going to find a fire alarm, which you want to flick. Once that's flicked, you want to make your way around to the other side, and you're going to go through the door just ahead of you. Now keep following the corridor around. And as you come up to the middle of the corridor or so, you're going to find another fire extinguisher by the radio. Keep following the red wire on the floor. Uh, it doesn't really bear any significance. I don't know if you can restart the TV as well in the corridor. As you come upstairs, you want to take a right and you want to keep making your way forward. And at the end here, you want to take a left and go into the next room. Now there's nothing in this room to be collected. So make your way over to the fan that is on the table just here. And you want to make this fan pretty damn big. Once you've made it really big, it's going to blow over the Jenga tower that's in the middle, providing it's pointed at it. And there was a door stacked on top of this. Uh, you want to make your way over to that door and you want to go through it. Now that you're in here, there are a series of windows around the room. You want to take the second one off of the opposite end and you want to make this one bigger so you can go through the window. Once you're in here, you want to look to your right and you're going to find a fire alarm on the wall. You want to hit that one. Now that you've got this, you want to make your way around the side of the wall and then you want to make your way to the back of the room. Don't go through the door just yet. And you're going to find this stack of boxes. On top of the boxes are a blueprint that you'll need to grab. So grab that drawing. 
And then once you have this, you wanna look for your next chess piece collectible. Look at the very top of the back of this door and you'll see the collectible so small, and it's very faint, but it's on the top of the door. Very difficult to see. Once you've got this, you wanna go through the door that was just nearby. And as you enter this corridor, you wanna make your way all the way down to the far end until you find a bouncy castle. Now that you're here, you want to pick up the Bounty Pass Castle and you want to make your way back through the corridor. And you want to kind of come back to this first area just here. Place the Bounty Castle on the floor and you want to jump on top of it so you can get up onto the ledge above. We are gunning for the next Blueprint Collectible to so hop on up. You want to grab that one and then you want to pick up your Bounty Castle again and you want to make your way back to the pool. Now that you're in here, you want to make the bouncy castle fairly large so that you can get through the door that is on it. It takes a couple of goes. It's a little bit awkward, uh, the bouncy castle I found. Uh, but once you're in, you want to make your way through the vent that is here ahead. And you want to look back down because you're now above the pool and you're by the second diving board. Grab the, uh, grab the bouncy castle, put it into the vent, and then you want to point it towards the door towards the, uh, the top of the diving board. And then you want to place the actual bouncy castle on the very top diving board altogether. Once you've done that, you want to turn around and you want to go back into the room you were just in. And by the door, you are going to see another fire extinguisher that you need to run out. Once you've done that, you want to go through the door that is just on your left here. And you want to drop through into this exit. As you come in here, you'll want to turn around for a fire extinguisher. As you've done that, you want to make your way into the room. On the right hand side, there's another fire alarm. And you want to make your way around the other side and you want to go through this door just here. Hello. Now I found this part to be a little bit buggy, but what you want to do is you want to pick up any of the doors and you want to make one of them as big as possible. So you need to keep growing the size of the door uh, until you can't really kind of grow it any further. Um, the thing gets pretty huge and it becomes a bit of a pain to try and catch. Once you've done that, you want to kind of make your way around the door. Apparently you can't jump onto the ledge and go across that way, but make your way around. You want to pick up the smaller door that's just down here and you want to make that the appropriate height for you to get through. So make it a little bit bigger. And once you've done that, go through and you want to look down at the floor and you want to pick up the small door that you've just entered and you want to place it in the keyhole just in front of you. Once you've done that, you want to go into the big door. And once you've gone through that door, you want to look out and you want to grab the big door that you've just picked up and you want to make your way into the chest room and we want to place this somewhere in the room that is going to allow you to get in effectively uh, and be of a pretty reasonably large size. So look to the back of the room and you want to drop the door down. For some reason, it falls down really slowly. Go back through the little door and you're going to come out full size. Uh, and as you kind of come out, you're going to see this clocking device that is in front of you. You want to look on top of the clocking device and you're going to find a blueprint that you can pick up. Now you have this, move the door out of the way. Mine disappears for some reason. Pick up the dollhouse and you want to make the dollhouse a little bit bigger uh, so that you can get through. I have a bit of a frame rate issue here, probably from that door disappearing into the nth dimension. Uh, once that doll's house is the right size, you wanna walk on in. Now I cut it here because I actually didn't have the right size. Turn around and you wanna hit the fire alarm on the wall. As you can see, my house is, seems to be doing something special. Make your way to the end of the corridor and you wanna use the fire extinguisher up. And then you wanna walk into the lift to end this level. Okay, so we are now in chapter number seven, which is called Labyrinth. We're getting close to the end now. Turn around, we're on a timer here, by the way. Use the fire extinguisher by the door. Once you've done that one, you wanna make your way around through the corridor until you reach the next fire extinguisher. So, so if you don't make it in time, by the way, you'll have to restart this checkpoint or chapter to make sure you get the collectibles. 
Follow the corridor around to the next fire extinguisher, which is on the wall by the exit door. As you come through this door, you want to look to your left and you're going to find a fire alarm on the wall. You want to hit that one. Once you've done that, turn around. And you want to follow the corridor down. You want to take a right. You want to take a left. And you want to continue forward. Hypothesis. And there's a fire alarm right by the shelving just here. Conclusion. You want to go through this door and then turn around. You're going to find Impossible. a fire extinguisher by this door. You want to make your way down to the end of the corridor. And then you want to take a right just here and you want to keep making your way forward. Improved. You're going to come into a very familiar looking corridor. On the left hand side is another fire alarm. Make your way down to the end next to what would normally be a lift and you're going to find a fire extinguisher. Now at this point you need to wait for the timer to run out and you'll be teleported back to your bedroom. Continue with Somnasculpt therapy indefinitely on an independent basis as all orientation resources have been exhausted. This concludes your standard orientation protocol. Goodbye. Now we're still on a timer here, uh, but when you're back in the bedroom, hit the alarm again, exit out the door. You're going to take a left as you leave, and as you come around the corridor, you're going to find your fire, fire extinguisher and fire alarm as per normal. Uh, once you've got these, this is good news. You won't need to get them again for this section, but the timer, when it runs out, it's going to teleport you back to the bedroom again. Hit the alarm one more time. You're going to exit out of the room. Uh, you can do whatever you want in these periods of times, just when the alarm starts ringing and it runs out. Uh, you get teleported back to the room again. Once again, do the same thing, exit the bedroom, and you'll get pulled back into the bedroom again. Once that's happened, you want to hit the alarm again one more time. The room will go dark. You're actually now in a room that is completely flipped to another direction. And drop out of the door, and you want to turn around until you can see some light. Make your way into this room, and by these chairs just in front of you, there is a pillar. Uh, and on this pillar, there is a fire extinguisher that you need to run out. And to the left of this pillar, there is a chair that has a alarm on it that you need to hit again. Uh, and this is going to teleport you back to the bedroom. Once you're in here, you want to pick up the painting off the wall, step out into the corridor and make it slightly bigger. And then you want to go through the painting. Look to your right as you get out of the painting and you're going to find a alarm on the wall. You want to pull this one. Make your way around to the other side and you want to go through the door that is just ahead. And then to the left of you, there is going to be another fire extinguisher. You'll then want to follow the corridor around and you'll reach a fire alarm on the left and then a second one to follow. Go through the door on the end and you'll notice that you're back in the same corridor. There is another fire extinguisher on your left. Follow the door through and you're going to find the same two fire alarms again, but both need to be hit this time around. Once you've done that, you want to go through this door just here, ahead. And this time around, you're going to go to the side of the door to find a fire extinguisher. You want to take a right and as you walk forward, you're going to fall. So the corridor is going to change direction. You're going to fall down. And as you land into this area, you want to look to the left. Okay, by the door, you're going to find a, another fire extinguisher. You want to drop into the hole just here. And you're going to fall all of the way down to another fire extinguisher. And as you've done that, you want to look up the wall on the right-hand side. You want to pull the door off. Uh, and when the sign falls down, this, is then, this door can be picked up one more time. And you want to make the sign into a ramp to get up to the door way where it just fell down. So make it bigger. Uh, and as you can see, I'm no good at this, but keep tweaking it and eventually you get there and I edit it out. And you want to hop onto the door, you want to keep going up and you want to jump into this doorway just here. Now, as you come across to the kind of second window, you want to look down and in and you're going to see your next chess piece. You might have to look at it from an angle to make it a little bit easier to get. Once you've done that, you want to turn around and you want to look to the wall and at the top, you're going to find a, another fire extinguisher. Once you've done that, exit out of this room. You'll then need to drop even further down through the door that you opened up earlier. Look up for a fire alarm just above you. Hit that switch 
make your way down the corridor and you're going to come across eventually a, another fire extinguisher. Run that one into the ground and then you're going to jump through the door and look to your right and you're going to find a crack in the skylight. You want to go through the skylight. You can listen to the radio if you want to, but make your way into this kind of dark area and you want to drop down onto the pipes, hop up, and now you're going to want to make your way all the way down to the other end to find a very well camouflaged fire alarm. So as you get down to this end by the door just here, it is on the wall. You want to give that one a pull. And then you want to look to your right and you want to drop down a hole uh, that is very invisible. And once you're at the bottom, you need to find a set of stairs that are on a table. So pick up the stairs that are on the table and you want to put them above you and you want to let them fall down. I don't know if this is weight orientated or if you can just drop it down straight away, but I make them a little bit bigger just in case. This is going to knock the floor out from underneath you. Once that's happened, you want to fall all the way down. You're going to need to move some of this debris out of the way and make it smaller. To the right of the lift, there is a fire alarm that you're going to want to hit. And then to the left of that lift, there is a fire extinguisher that you're going to need to run out. This lift, you want to go into it, but it is not the exit to the level. Once the door opens and it gives you a brick wall, turn around for the pathway forward. Now there is something that I need to explain about this next puzzle. Um, the exit sign, you must look in the opposite direction of the way the exit sign is telling you to go beforehand. So in this case it's random. For me it tells me it looks to the left, so I want to look to the right. I turn around and the door's back. I want to go down here, it tells me to go to the right, so I need to look to the left and you'll see these stop signs turn around and go through the door. Drop down. Now this will be different for you every single time, but always look in the opposite direction of what the exit sign is telling you to do. So look to the right and then to the left. And then once you've completed corridor five by doing this, you'll be able to exit out of this maze. Otherwise it's just an infinite loop. Once you land in here, you just want to continue forward, and as you come in, you want to pick up the dice that's just here, and you want to make your way over to the edge of the pool, and you just want to drop it down, hop on up, turn around and go look for the cube, but it's gone, turn around again, it's just above you, drop it down in front of the next ledge, make it bigger if you have to, uh, and then climb on up one more level, and then we're going to need to do something here a little bit specific, so enter this room, grab yourself a can from the machine, you're going to take that out and we want to exit back into the room we were just in. There is a fire alarm there we'll grab in a second and we need to make this soda can pretty big. So make it big and we want to place it by the scaffolding in front of us and we're going to use a combination of this and the cube to get to the top of that scaffolding. So once your soda can's in place, grab your cube, make your way over and you want to place this on top of it. The water is actually solid here, I don't know why I chose the dump jump. Uh, and you want to put that on top and then once you've got enough height on here and as you can see as always I mess it up um, but you'll be able to jump on top of the scaffolding that's just in front of you and at the top is your next blueprint okay so now we want to backtrack to the vending machine turn around by there by the door you come in there is your next fire alarm pull this one and then you want to turn around and you want to go back into here and you want to make your way out of the door. There's a fire extinguisher by this door. Do you want to exhaust that one? Now make your way over to the switch. The actual bishop disappears for some reason. Pick up the knight chest piece and you want to drop it down onto the button. And you want to make your way back through the door. You want to turn around and you want to grab your knight's piece again. Now we're going to use this to get to a chess piece that is above us. So make your way down, you can see the chess piece glowing a blue at the top. And you want to make this knight piece pretty much bigger. And we're going to need to jump onto the pipes. So make it big. You can use the desk if you want. I fail at using the desk, so I just end up using here. Um, but once it's done, jump on top of the thing, on the desk, and you want to hop up. Grab the knight's piece again, and you want to make your way down the pipe. Look up so you can kind of gauge where the collectible is, and we're going to need to try and get onto the lampshade just here. So make the knight bigger if need be. 
Once you've done that, you want to hop onto the light switch, sorry, the light, and you want to look up and you want to grab the uh, the chess piece from above you. That's the smoothest collectible for me in the game so far. Drop down, and then you're going to make your way around the corridor, so keep following it, and there's going to be a fire extinguisher by the end, careful not to fall down. Okay, once you've done that, you want to drop down and you're going to fall all the way down into this room here. Don't touch the cube yet. Use the fire extinguisher that is behind you and follow the corridor down to the end and you're going to find another blueprint on the end of here. And once you've done that, backtrack to the dice and you want to pick the dice up. Now the dice is going to move you to a different room. So put the dice down, we will turn around and there's a lift behind you. There's an invisible floor here. You want to walk behind the door and you want to drop down between the step ladder and that and you're going to fall through the floor. This is crazy, crazy difficult to find. But keep walking forward and you'll find a constellation corridor. Make your way into the room and you want to look up to the stars. And we're going to do a spot of alignment again. Uh, this time around, it is some form of strange light, I believe. Yeah. Now that light actually makes moon shapes on the wall in the game, believe it or not. So once you've done that and you've got all of the, uh, the stars have fallen off of the picture and it's gone, exit out and climb back up through the invisible floor panel. Okay, so once you're out, you want to use the uh, the dice. You want to make that a little bit bigger. You want to jump on up. You want to go past the bed that is just here, and you want to go through the uh, the doorway. Don't touch the cube just yet. Go past it. Oh, sorry, next to it there is a fire extinguisher. And then just past it there is another fire alarm. You want to trip that one. The clones for some reason, and then pick up the cube. Put the cube down, and you'll get teleported out of the area. Walk straight ahead and you want to take a right and as you hit here you want to just drop down you get teleported again uh, and now at this stage you will want to turn around and you want to go back into this room and in front of you there is a fire alarm on the door hit this one turn around and you want to hop back up the dice that is just there and on the door on the left you're going to find the fire extinguisher run this one out you want to enter this room uh, and I've got a bit of a frame rate issue here. However, on the left hand side, you'll find your next fire alarm. You want to give this one a tweak. Turn around and you want to go over to the alarm clock and you want to hit this one. And this is going to teleport you to a different area. You're going to be in this lift. Now you need to look for the arrows on the floor and you want to follow the instructions from the arrows. So keep walking through the lift and you'll eventually find them. There is a proper way through this maze. However, the arrows will always put you back in the right direction. Keep following them and you will get out of this maze. Now that you're free of the maze, walk forward and you want to hit the alarm clock in front of you. Something really weird happens, everything becomes a painting. Walk forward again and you want to go into the lift. This is still not the end of the level. So walk in, turn around and you'll see everything changes. Uh, you're in a car parking lot and you want to keep walking forward until you kind of hit a wall. And you want to keep walking to the right to hit a kind of corner. As you can see it's a scene setting. When you're in that corner, turn around and walk straight across to the other side. Uh, and wait for the same thing to kind of happen. Uh, as you can kind of gather, you're in a bit of a weird TV set kind of environment. So once that's happened, turn around, you'll see a room that's now appeared in the area. And you need to get on top of this room for your next collectible. Don't touch the alarm inside. You can either use the cabinet here, but I was unable to do it for some reason. Uh, but if you go around the, um, the other side of the building to the left, there is kind of like an electrical cabinet. Uh, and you can also jump up on top of this one to get on top. And when you're on top, you're going to find your next blueprint. Once you've done that, you want to drop down, and you want to head into the room, and you want to hit the alarm clock to close out this level.
Okay, so now we're in chapter eight, which is the last kind of big push. Uh, this is called white space. You wanna turn around and you wanna grab off of this shelf here, the very tiny version of the clinic you're in. And you're gonna to wanna to make that bigger. Once it's big enough, you're gonna put it down on the floor in front of you. I somehow managed to screw it up and kill my frame rate. Um, so once you've done that, make it big enough. Yep. Walk on in and you'll go through to the other side past the soda machine and you'll be back in the same room. Grab the clinic that you picked up a second ago and you want to drop it on the table where you previously found it. So drop it down, you want to spin it around uh, because now you can switch between that room on your right and the clinic. So once it's down, you want to go in and you want to go past the vending machine again uh, and you go through the door and you're now in the cardboard kind of replica area. Make your way around to the other side of this building here. You want to go inside. All fire switches in this building have been hit and used. You want to go behind the bar and you want to hop on top of the bar and you're going to find one of the collectibles is in amongst the cans just here. Insanely very well hidden. Once you've done that, you want to hop over the bar and you want to go up onto the main stage. You want to go out to the right and you want to exit back from the uh, to the building that you were just in a second ago. So go into the clinic and you're going to make yourself big again. You want to go through the other side and you're going to pick up the clinic off of the table one more time. And you want to return back to the vending machine. And now you're going to place the clinic inside the vending machine. So shrink it down as small as possible. Uh, and you want to place it into where you would pick up the can from. So keep shrinking it down. It does take a couple of shots. And then once it's in, drop it down, turn around, and you want to go through the door behind you. And you'll now be inside the vending machine. And you want to look up to the top corner and you want to grab yourself the chest piece from there, exit out, and then you want to pick up the uh, clinic from the vending machine, turn around and you want to place the clinic in the door behind you to create a paradox, go through this door and this is going to cause the dream world to break down. It takes a few minutes and eventually you'll end up in something called white space. And now that you're in white space, you want to go forward and you want to make your way through the door just ahead of you. Uh, and then you want to keep going forward until you actually kind of reach the end of the corridor. Uh, and you're going to see some white frames in front of you. Uh, and here there's an invisible pair of stairs. You want to go up the stairs and you want to keep walking forward and eventually you are going to fall down. Uh, once you've landed, you're going to walk forward and fall down again straight away. And then when you hit the bottom, you want to move this black square in front of you out of the way. Uh, you want to go through the door that is just ahead. And now that you're in this area, you just want to kind of keep pushing on forward. So make your way around this building. Uh, and then Hello. here, Am you want to kind Mr. of get on top of the building again, yeah. like we did earlier. You want to hop on top of the electrical box. And once you're on top of that I there, you will see a blueprint on your right hand side. Uh, unveil that one to give a collection. And you want to jump down off the building and make your way to the door frame in the distance. Before you can reach that door, you will get teleported off and you'll get pulled to another door, which you'll need to keep walking forward towards. Once you're at the end of the stormy section, you want to keep making your way forward also. Uh, keep going down the corridor and you'll fall through a hole in the floor. Once you've landed into this room, you want to look to your, uh, to your right. You're going to find a fire extinguisher, which you want to use. And in the opposite corner of this room, you'll also find another fire extinguisher. And hopefully if everything's gone to plan, you've been following along. That is the last fire extinguisher in the game. Make your way around the central pillar and then there's another fire alarm here. You want to hit that one. And again, if everything's gone to plan, that should be the last fire alarm in the game. 
Turn around and find this shadow of this cabinet. It's very difficult to see, but it's actually a passageway through. through. Uh, and you want to follow the signs to the exit to get out into this kind of open area. As you're in the brilliant white corridor, you want to turn around and go past the windows and look back to the door you just came through. Follow it to the other side and you want to get the blueprint from here. And then you want to make your way back to the, uh, the, the main corridor and you want to keep walking forward till you go through the door. As you go through this door, just make your way to the other side and you want to go out of the window on that end. Okay, and as you exit out of this, you want to pick up the block that's behind you, you want to shrink it down, and you want to make your way over to the door that is just in the distance here. You want to place that block down in front of it, and you want to hop on up, and you want to go through the door, uh, and you want to make your way around this radio, and you want to go to the left, and in your distance you're going to see a light switch. Keep walking through all the junk till you eventually get it, and then you want to hit the light switch once you reach the end. Once you've done that, everything's going to go black. You turn around, you're going to see all of the exit signs on the wall. You want to turn around, you're going to see a staircase in front of you. Go underneath the staircase. It's a little bit confusing at first. Take a right as you come out, and then you want to go up the staircase. So make your way up to the top. Follow the edge around. Be careful not to fall. Uh, kind of reminds me of Mario this bit. Uh, and then you'll get about halfway along, and you're going to fall down a hole that you can't see. Once you're in this area here, you want to actually go to the right and you want to go out of the room because it's an infinite loop. Uh, and you want to make your way around to the back of this section and you're going to find a doorway just here. Enter this one. And as you come forward, there's going to be a radio in front of you. You're going to take a left and you want to go out of the door just on the side. And now we're going to sweep up some of the final collectibles in the game. Take a right from that door and you want to make your way over the top of the rocks just here. So hop on over and you're going to find a blueprint on the other side that you need to collect. This is the last blueprint in the game. Now that you've done this you want to hop over the rocks and you want to continue forward. Now you can see the door leading to the next section directly in front of you. You want to ignore that and you want to stay on the right hand side and keep hugging a right. And eventually you'll come to the slope that goes down. As you get to the bottom of the slope, you'll see this container-like shape, and you want to make your way in. This is the last constellation of the game. So make your way in, and you want to look around the room. Uh, there's a bit of a cut here because I spent ages trying to do it, but I eventually figured it out. It's a keyboard, so look up towards the door. It's directly above the door. You need to go to the right-hand side ever so slightly. Uh, and once it's appeared into place, you want to hit the B button on that and collect that last constellation. Now that you have this, you want to exit out of the room and you want to make your way back to the exit to this area. Uh, we're not going to quite leave just yet. We're going to get some things from that particular room that we need to bring back into this area. So make your way up the slope and then you want to go through the door on your right hand side. And then on the table just ahead of you, there is a chess piece. So walk forward and grab one of the chess pieces, doesn't matter which one. Exit out and you want to follow the right hand side and then you want to hug the wall to the left and you'll come across a tunnel that you can go through. As you make it to the other side of this tunnel you're going to find a um, kind of a corner and this is like white piece of wall that you can draw on or there are drawings hidden under. Make your chest piece pretty big as you're going to use it as a hurdle to get up and you want to prop this up in the corner uh, to make yourself be able to climb up to the top of it. Took me a few goes, so I'm going to cut that out so you don't have to watch my mistakes. And once you finally get the chess piece in place, as you can see, the drawings appeared. Uh, you want to hop on top of that, hop on top of the drawing. Look to your right, and you can hop up on the ledge there, and then to the left, you can hop up. We can now follow this around, so keep following this around past this first water cooler. Uh, and then you want to hang a left. As you come round to the left, you'll be another ledge you need to jump up. You want to keep an eye on the floor. We're looking for a red marking on the floor here because this is the next chess piece of the game. So when you're up, 
you'll see this red mark just here on this water cooler uh, and you'll see a ledge with another red mark here drop down and look at the water cooler and line up the pieces and this is going to give you the chest piece that you're looking for if you've been following along everything should be now all good pretty much in terms of collectibles so that's going to bag you that last one hop back up and then you want to drop down and start making your way back towards the exit of the level of the area sorry not the level now if you've missed any of the collectibles along the way or any of the fire extinguishers the level select option at the end of the game will allow you to go back in and go through the level to find something but if everything's been followed so far you should be good um, they're fairly difficult to miss things like the fire extinguishers and fire alarms um, now we need to backtrack and go get our uh, chest piece that we were using as a prop earlier uh, and once we've got that it's just on the wall on the left hand side pick it up and we want to go back to the exit to this area Now the trick to this room is if you drop down a chest piece, that makes the floor solid. There's a second chest piece on the table, so you want to pick that one up and you want to place it on the square across. Stand next to the other chest piece, turn around and pick up the last one and place it on the square behind you. And you want to rinse and repeat this till you get to the other side. Once you're on the other side, go through the door, you walk forward and you want to drop down and there is a white doorway in front of you. Pick up the cube because you can't go through the door without it. Place the cube on the other side and you'll be able to walk through. Grab the cheese wedge, turn around and you want to put the cheese wedge through the door and you want to go through the same way. Look to your right and you'll see a door up the top and you want to make the cheese wedge as big as possible to climb up. Uh, I'm cursed when handling cheese in this game, I can never get it right, so there's a bit of a dodgy cut here. Climb up your cheese and then you want to jump through the door and then walk into this area and you want to make your way all the way down to the far bottom as possible. Just keep falling down through the different squares. Now as you reach the bottom of this section, you'll come into a corridor. You want to walk forward through this corridor. It's a little bit trippy and you want to keep following it all the way around. And as you come to the end, you want to take a left uh, and you'll come out of this area. Now once you're out of here you want to turn around, you want to move the block out of the way and you want to drop through the floor here and this is going to pretty much take you to the end of the level. Uh, you'll fall down through the alarm clock, you want to look up after that and once you reach the end uh, you want to be able to hit the alarm clock button at the end of this section. So keep falling uh, and eventually it will put you back into your bedroom. Now that you're back in here, you want to pretty much head over to the alarm clock in the corner. You want to hit that button uh, and that's going to finish chapter 8 for you. You're now in chapter 9 and chapter 9 you just have to walk around uh, as the guy is talking to you. There's no collectibles, no nothing. Um, you'll just make it to the end of the level. And once you hit back to the main menu, you will unlock the achievement for beating the game. Um, so yeah, you pretty much just walk around, he keeps talking, uh, and you'll keep teleporting to new locations. Now, you won't have all of the miscellaneous achievements yet, so the speed run and everything will still not be unlocked. Um, you'll need to do that without the collectibles, it's the only way it's possible. But you'll also need to get some kind of uh, off of the outside of the level achievements, which I'm going to explain to you. So once this section is over and the guy is done talking, uh, we'll regroup back at the main menu.
always be a struggle, and you will always have problems. But today, you have the chance to see things differently. Even though it meant facing obstacles that seemed impossible at first, you thought outside the box, and you overcame them. Because you saw things from every angle, you understood them for what they really were. Because you kept moving forward, no matter how far off the path you were told you were headed, or how unexpected it became, you found your way. in the real world. Some part of you will say that none of this was real. So how could it have really meant anything? But just like the power of perspective itself, it will have been as real as you believed it to be. All you've got to do is wait. Okay, so now that we're back at the main menu, you'll get your achievement for beating the game. Uh, but this time around, we now need to go get the trophy and we need to beat the guy at his own chess game. You'll see some new options have appeared in your menu. And you'll go down to the fire escape sign and you want to click on this one. That's going to drop you off of this menu and leave you in this room. You want to walk forward and you want to go through any of the double doors, it doesn't matter which. Make your way around to the other side and you'll pick this trophy up and you'll bag yourself an achievement for picking up the trophy. And once you have that trophy and that achievement, you want to back up to the main menu, so hit the pause button and the main menu option will be there. And then we want to level select into chapter two um, to get to the kind of the next missable achievement. So hit the level select, pick chapter two, which is optical. Uh, and when you're in this level, you want to kind of turn around from your bedroom, walk through the main corridor. You want to take a right. Uh, and then there is a computer screen just straight here in front of you. You want to press B on this and it's going to teleport you to a chess room. Now you've got to beat the guy at chess what here and to do that you need to go around to the other side of the board from where you spawn in. You want to take off the small red pawn behind the king and you want to move it off the table and you want to grab the rook that's on the far side just here and you want to bring that in behind the king. This will beat the guy at chess. So I've been Jessica from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful drop us a like, comment and subscribe and happy hunting.